The Forex majors trading right now are looking like this. Bit of softness here in the, in the U.S. dollar in the Asian trading session. 115.23 against the Japanese yen. Euro dollar uh, showing a bit of weakness, uh, 136.66. Euro yen is at 157.50. Uh, we did have uh, even further weakness of the U.S. dollar overnight uh, when we had some uh, data released as well as the ECB's decision to stand pat as well. But let's sort of put some sense into all these events with Stephen Rolls, who's an analyst at CFC Seymour Limited. Stephen, thanks for coming on uh, cash flow here. What do you make first of the U.S. data that came out overnight? Uh, do you think it's supportive of a rate cut by the Fed? Well, well, I think that the data that came out was in line with the Beige Book, which was basically that the data or the growth is still not as negative as some are expecting. That uh, the, um, I'm focusing on the retail sales um, uh, data that came out last night, which is quite optimistic that the consumer still has some legs here. Nevertheless, though, I'm still calling for a rate cut on September 18th. It's completely priced into the market. There's actually a 40% chance that uh, the Fed's going to cut. Uh, by four, by uh, 50 basis points, but I'm looking for a, a continual uh, uh, movement towards a 25 basis point cut on September 18th here. What do you expect the uh, jobs numbers to show tonight? Uh, a similar theme as to what the retail numbers showed? I, I think that uh, the job numbers will be in line with what we've seen on the weekly numbers and uh, overall we think that they'll come in a little bit below consensus, probably in the neighborhood of about 85,000 where last time it was about 92,000. So, and it's specifically focusing on the ADP numbers that came out the other day, which were very, very uh, pessimistic. So look for a little bit of a, a downturn in the job growth um, data, but I don't expect it to be a major player as I think it's really well expected to, to come in a little softer tonight. And then, of course, overnight, Stephen, we had both the uh, European Central Bank and the Bank of England standing pat on interest rates. Here in Asia, we've had the Bank of Korea this morning announcing that it was also not doing anything with interest rates. Does this increase the chances in any way or, or perhaps decrease the chances of the Fed being able to cut rates as you expect on September 18th? Uh, I don't think it has any bearing whatsoever on the, on the Fed's decision. I think that that the Fed will continue to focus on its own data as the subprime issue is internally based. It's a domestic issue. The, the, um, what we saw out of the ECB was expected and basically he moved from vigilance on inflation to monitoring uh, economic data and that will be the theme for the rest of the year here we see. And Bank of Korea's situation was completely expected. Uh, their last time they hiked last month uh, was a huge surprise to the entire market when they increased uh, to 5%. But Mm -hmm. We expect Bank of Korea to remain on hold as well for the rest of the year. What about the reverse then? If the Fed cuts interest rates on the 18th and then perhaps does more successive cuts, would it put pressure on some of these other banks like the ECB, which have flagged inflation as their primary concern and the BOK, for example, would it uh, make it more difficult for them to continue raising rates? Might they also cut rates as well? What do you think? Uh, I don't think in the near term. I, I think that we'll have to focus on the fact that the ECB is still, they, they mentioned it last night, they're still uh, concerned about inflation. So what we actually think that the next move by the ECB will, would, would be a hike over a cut. So I, th I think that it's fair to say that over the next um, couple meetings here that they'll probably remain on hold as they'll be very focused on economic data. So uh, we don't think that they'll follow uh, the, the Fed's uh, move by a cut as uh, the they didn't last time, and uh, the ECB usually delays their, their policies a little bit longer than, uh, than the U.S. does. So would this be negative for the dollar then? I, I think overall, yes, it will be as interest rate differentials will, will widen here. So we look for the, the euro to move to about 140. Uh, I think the major event coming up that we have to focus on is uh, Greenspan's autobiography comes out <laughs> just as, uh, as, as the... Uh, rate cut comes out so he's going to be doing a huge media campaign we haven't heard any uh, any thoughts or any opinions out of uh, Mr. Greenspan for quite some time here and a few months ago he mentioned that uh, one third chance for a recession so we could see traders focused on uh, their, their television sets uh, and not so much on the economic data here coming up over the next few weeks Sort of stealing the limelight away from Bernanke to some extent. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about another central bank that's also meeting the week of the 18th, uh, the BOJ, 18th, 19th to be exact. Their decision comes out the day after the Fed's decision. Uh, you think that's going to have any bearing on what the BOJ is going to do? Uh, what do you think the BOJ will do? 
I, it could have a bearing if uh, the, the, the Fed comes up with a complete surprise, but I, I think that the BOJ will actually be forced to uh, stay on hold for, for another month here. I, I think that the economic data that came out, uh, poor retail sales, they're still in deflation, and uh, this week with CapEx coming below expectations at a, a very low, at a very low number, that they just don't have the economic data to push them to, to closer to normalized rates here. So. Uh, we still look for the yen carry trade to gradually resume, so look for the yen to move back to the 120 territory as we come closer to the end of the year here. Okay, Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Stephen Rolls, analyst with CFC Seymour Limited.